our perception, you can move one. Hey, whatever it took you, here is our lungs, you can. Here is our will, you can. So we lift it up to you, you can move one. Hey, whatever it took you. Now somebody open up your mouth and begin to surrender your life. Begin to surrender your life. One more time, real strong. I just want you to open up your mouth and begin to surrender to your father as you let him in the room. I said, let him in the room. I said, let him in the room. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, all we get, and be lifted up. He everlasting God and let the king of glory come in.
Amen. Amen. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Engine Room 2.0. This, this, this month's theme is Faith Moves, and we'll be, we are looking at the scripture of Hebrews 11, going from verses 1 to 6. And so I just want to remind you all that whilst, you know, we are in many different places, we are all still one body spread across different locations where we're going to lift up the name of Jesus and we're going to pray and pray things into being, cast down things that have been put against us. So I just want you guys to remember to use the chat, please. If someone if someone's testimony is touching you, encourage them, support them. If you're being blessed, let us know. If that prayer hit you, let us know. If you have a prayer request, let us know. Um, don't Also, don't forget to use Padlet and please send in your prayer request on there. The link shall be put into the chat. And for those of you on YouTube, it shall be put into your chat there as well. And you know, that's prayer requests and any praise reports that you have because we know our God answers prayers. And for those who don't know, we have to let them know he, he lives, he moves, and he answers prayers. So I'm going to hand off over to our psalmist for this evening, the Yvonne Johnson Elliot. Please go ahead. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Let me just lift up the name of Jesus first and foremost. If you're able to unmute, please, let's just Hallelujah. up the name Hallelujah. of Jesus. Lord, we pray to you. Amen. Lord, we magnify you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are great. Lord, you are magnificent. Lord, we just love you today. Lord, thank you for this week. Thank you that you saw us through this week. Thank you for your grace and your mercy at that abounds this week. Thank you, Lord, that we will not be overwhelmed this week no matter what comes our way you god you reign you reign you reign you reign you reign hallelujah thank you jesus oh god hallelujah bless the lord bless the lord bless the lord bless the lord my bible tells me the lord is my strength and my shield amen heart trusted in him and i am helped therefore my heart greatly rejoices and with my song, I will praise him. The Lord is their strength and he is their saving refuge of his anointed. We're going to look to him. We are not going to be overwhelmed in this season, no matter what the enemy tries to put in our path. My God, we are protected. <laughs> we are protected. God, we look to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me a vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. 
you know just what to do, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Bless your name. Mm-hmm. God, we look to you. We won't be overwhelmed. Give us wisdom to see things like you do. God, we look to you. You where our help comes from. Give us wisdom. You know just what to do, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. So I will be my strength, and I will love you. Lord, my shield, and I will love you, Lord, my rock, forever, my days, I will love you, God. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Oh, hallelujah, our God reigns forever. My days, hallelujah. Say with me, oh, hallelujah. Our God reigns, hallelujah. Our God reigns, hallelujah. Almighty, He is the God, your healer. He sent His word okay, to heal your disease. He is the God, your healer. Oh. I am the God that he left thee. I am the God, your healer. Oh, he sent his word to heal your disease. I am the God. Your healer, so I will love you, she, and I will love you, Lord, and I will love you, Lord. Forever, my days, we will love you, 
forever our days we will love you God come on somebody just lift up the name of Jesus hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. That will give you strength from day to day. Will never, hallelujah, lose its power. Faith. Pray for increase in our faith. Hallelujah. We trust you, God. And we believe in you, God. We stand on your word and we stand on your promises. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Mr. Minister Yvonne. Thank you so much. You know, you, you sing that, God, I look to you because it's from you that my help comes from and God we're trusting you so God increase our faith give us faith to believe Lord we look to the mountains Psalm 121 we look to the mountains and we ask ourselves you know from where does our help come from where does our help come from we see the magnitude of the mountains we see the vastness of the mountains but then we realize that our help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth the one that is greater the one that is stronger the one that is uh, powerful to save and mighty to heal and and a great god that will restore and we're going to pray into this we're going to start by asking god to increase our faith to believe to believe that god will do what he said he will do Amen. to believe that he will he will Amen. keep us to believe that he will protect us to believe that he will lead us in the Amen. plan that he has for us because the plans are good plans that Amen. he has for us and the plans for us to prosper and Amen. not for our demise so we Amen. need to stand on the word of god and say god give me faith to believe Amen. give me faith to trust Give me faith to see things like you do, Father God, because at the moment I see the obstacle. But Lord, help me to see you like God that is not moved by the situation. The God that says, peace be still to the storm that is in the way. So let's pray together and let's press into this prayer of God. Give me faith. Give me vision. Give me wisdom to see things like you do. Heavenly Father, we come to you collectively and we say, Father God, help us. Help us to see things like you do, God. Lord, help us, Lord, to move the obstacles out of the way. Those things, Father God, that are clouding our judgment, Father God. The things that are limiting our faith. The stumbling blocks to us believing, Heavenly Father. Help us, Father God, to put away the childish things, Father God, Lord. Help us to mature in our faith, Father God. So, Lord, that we'll be able to stand. So, Lord, we'll be able to trust your word is true. Help us, Father God, to put away faithless talk, Heavenly Father. Help yes. us to put away those things that are contrary to speaking life, like backbiting, Father God. Help us to put away, help us to outgrow grow father god as we feed ourselves on your word father god our faith grows as we feed ourselves on your word lord we mature we are able to lord look past the things that caused us to stumble last year father god why because we're growing in you and lord as we're waiting on you as we're serving you our strength is being renewed so thank you father god for renewing our strength and helping us to believe again help us to trust again help us lord to, to move again help us lord to speak again to speak your word once again over the situation heavenly father help us father god help us lord lord we we trust in you lord we trust in you, Father God, that it's by your grace, it's by your mercy, it's not by our might and it's not by our power, but it's by your spirit that the change comes. So, Lord, we're leaning in to you, Father God. We're relying on you. We're not leaning on our own understanding, but we're acknowledging you in all our ways. And we know that you will make our path straight. So, thank you for making a way where there was no way. We trust you, God. We believe you, Father God. And we declare that we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We're declaring that in the name of Jesus. 
we believe you, we trust you and we are grateful for what you have done, what you are doing and what you will do. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Can we ask you to come on mind and just, just thank God? Thank God that we've got the ability to pray and we can seek him. And we, we are not slaves. We are joint ears. We, we've been engrafted in. We've got rights. We can enter in. He's our Abba Father. So let's just worship God. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you. You are righteous. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We praise your name, oh God. You are worthy. Thank you, Lord. We just bless your name. You are holy, so righteous, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are the one who Lord is the name above all names, Lord Jesus. And so we praise you, the living God. There is no shortness, there is no shortness. Glory be to your name, there is no lack. Hallelujah. You are so talking about everything that you desire tonight. We bless you and we glorify you for the moving of your Holy Ghost, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Time cannot hold your defense, cannot restrain you. Hallelujah. There is absolutely nothing that you can't do, Lord Jesus. And so we rain down praise, Lord Jesus. And send the mighty praises in your church. Hallelujah. You are the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You require trust. Hallelujah. You establish your authority on the earth, Lord God. We are honored. We are humbled to know that you, Lord Jesus, have chosen us. Hallelujah. Glory to you. You have chosen us. Hallelujah. When we were neglected and rejected, you are good. That you are faithful by yourself, Lord Jesus. You are true. We made us for all of you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep on moving in the spirit, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for delivering us from the fear of hell. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us back again. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can smile at you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to your name. Glory be your name, God. Send be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. I'm going to give us more opportunity to just worship God, but wherever you are, worship God. But I'm going to make a request of you. I want you to share, if you've got the flyer in your local WhatsApp groups, share on your social media and say, come for prayer. And if you've got a friend or a family member that you know that needs prayer, needs healing, tell them to come to the healing room. We're going to be praying tonight and um, we want to join together. It's okay. We're not worried about numbers, but we want as many as people as possible to touch and agree tonight. And so we can hear testimonies of miracles. So if you've got Facebook, share on your Facebook. If you've got WhatsApp, share on your WhatsApp. If you've got Instagram, if you've got TikTok, whatever you've got, send a text to your church sister to the intercessors are you on engine room tonight you're missing out because something is going to happen tonight amen? amen hallelujah hallelujah so i'm just going to introduce um minister nadine ford she's a minister in her own right and she's going to come and she's going to pray and she's going to um give a, a short testimony and and you know god bless you the floor is your woman of god god bless you god bless you first of all I have to give a confession. And my confession is that I wasn't going to testify. And then the Lord whispered to, whispered to me and said in John 5, 31 and 32, he said, if I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies in my favor and I know his testimony about me is true. So I said, you know what, God, I have to give this testimony. Because I know you leave the 99 to go after the one. And if this helps just the one, I will do it just for you. Because I love you, Lord. I'm going to take you back. And last year, early last year, I was sitting at my kitchen table quietly. 
And I heard a whisper in my ear, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. And I said, what does that mean? So I said, you know, that's before I knew anything was wrong. So I went to the doctors because I had a growth and I was worried about it. This is a bit later on down the line. So I had a, um, a smear test and the smear test came back and said that I had a malignant growth. So I said, you know, God, thank you for telling me that your grace is sufficient. I need your grace because I can't do it by myself. So I went to the doctors, everything happened quite quickly. I was sent for a um, to test and they said that I'm gonna have to op op an operation to remove the growth. So I said, you know, God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for never, never leaving me nor forsaking me. You're with me so I can get through this. But I just wanted to say, sometimes when we go to hospital, it's not for ourselves. It's just to raise the name of Jesus for other patients that don't know about him. There's hospital evangelism. So, you know, when I went to hospital, when I came around up after the operation, there was no pain. Miraculously, there was no pain. And I said, God, you're so good. The nurses were saying, do you want um, paracetamol? Do you want painkillers? And I say, no, I'm fine. And, you know, there was a man opposite me who was in so much pain. And I could hear the Lord saying, Press, just pray, just pray, just pray for him. So I was praying and I was praying and I was praying and he had um, eternal, um, eternal bleeding. And then afterwards, he, they fixed him up and he was fine. He said he slept like a baby. And I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that I was here to pray. Even throughout my own struggles, I was here to pray for him. And as he came around the next day, I, gave, I had a scripture is, you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. And he knew God, but he needed to know him more. He needed to have a relationship with God. So I thank the Lord. You know, I was praying before about the growth. And then I was praying that I wouldn't have to have my lymph nodes removed. But the test came back and they said, I'm going to have them have to have them removed. So I said, Lord, if it's your will, if it's your perfect will, let it be done. So I had the operation. That operation was a little bit more challenging, but I knew God was with me again. God has taken me through. He's pulled me through where I couldn't get. I had good days and bad days. I have to be honest. And on the bad days, God carried me. He carried me in the palm of his hand. And I said, thank you, Lord. We know that I had to just give this testimony of, of God's goodness. He loves us all dearly. And he wants us to check our bodies. Check for anything that we, we can't take it for granted that we're well. We have to check. We have to be in um, alignment with the consultants and check our bodies. Check our have smear tests, have um, breast checks. Do you know men can get breast cancer as well? So you have to check yourself. God will go with you. He's going to meet you halfway, but you have to go that way. You have to say, Lord, I'm going to take care of this holy temple that the Holy Spirit dwells in. I'm going to look after. I know you're going to meet me, Lord Jesus, but I have to do my part. So that's my um, testimony. But I give God glory for me being alive and being here today. You know, God heals in two different ways. He heals us physically, spiritually, mentally, or he either heals us wholly and takes us home to glory. So we thank God for healing. Either way is a win-win situation. We thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to pray that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And whose report do we believe? We, be we believe the report of the Lord. Because when they took out my lymph nodes, they said that I might need treatment. And I said, you know, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. Every time I walked into a report, every time I walked into an appointment, I had to repeat those words. Because I know who God has called me to be. I'm his child. He loves me. He looks after me. He cares for me. Hallelujah. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that in Isaiah 53, verse 5, you say, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you for your healing power. Thank you, Lord, for your peace. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your, your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, that you carried us through. Thank you, Lord, that you have the healing power. The healing is the children's bread. We glorify and bless your holy name. Father, I thank you that I'm able here to give this testimony, to encourage somebody, to check themselves. Maybe they're feeling afraid, Father, Lord, for them to reach out and seek godly counsel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In James 5, um, verse 14, it says, to call for the elders of the church, to let them lay hands and um, pray for you. They anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We give you the highest praise. We worship you. We honor you. We glorify and bless your holy name. Because, Father, Lord, without you, there is nothing. Hallelujah. Without you, there is nothing in this earth. Hallelujah. So if you can save this um, stream and give it to somebody who's unsaved, who doesn't know about Jesus, because what the Lord is doing with me now, he's got me dealing with people that are dealing with cancer. Hallelujah. I saw a sister in Sainsbury's last week. And she'd had cancer three times. And I said to her, come to church with me. You know, I didn't even know she wasn't saved. She came to church and she was at the altar and she was crying and declaring Jesus as Christ, as her savior, as her Lord and savior. Father, we give you glory. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We thank you, Jesus. You are, you are who you are. You are the great I am. Hallelujah. You are the great I am. You are the am, you are the God who was and is and is to come. Hallelujah. There is none like you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We glory be to your name and give you glory and give you honor and give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Nadine. Do you know what, Sister Nadine? As you were just praying, I was just like, she's a worshiper. And um, before I ask everyone to give God praise, I just want to ask you, how did your worship enable you to get, because I felt it in my spirit. What was your worship like? My worship went to another level. Even now, when I hear worship, it's a different place for me because I know what I've come through and I know what God has brought me through and bringing me through. So my worship is beyond measure now. It's beyond crazy it's it's um crazy praise it's like as, as david danced before the lord it's like that i just want to dance and scream and shout and sing and say glory to your name god hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah i'm alive i'm alive so many didn't make it but he chose to save me and i'm grateful hallelujah thank you jesus mm. thank you lord hallelujah um, is um, there's a song for the worship power in me, just one free free, and I think that's 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 your that's your jam right now. Um, jam. I'm just gonna every jam, every jam. <laughs> Amen. I'm gonna ask everyone to just unmute, and we're just gonna praise God, and then we're gonna go into worship, and with Minister Ivan, and um, just 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 worship God and thank God for Nadine's life because her life shall be greater. She is shining. She's she, there's the glory of God upon her, you know. And we're just gonna praise God that He's doing more in her, and she's growing. Amen. And doors will open for her to testify and people will be healed while she testify. Amen. Because I just see doors just open. Um, whatever the test was, I know you have passed it in Jesus' name. So let us let us worship God and thank God for Nadine's life. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. We thank you because you are miracle Hallelujah. 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 We bless your name, Jesus. We glorify you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. 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 We thank you for your love.
Hallelujah, he is the name above every other name. Amen. He's the name that brings healing. Oh, Amen. God. That brings life. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm just going to sing that song today. Amen. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We extol you, God. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we love you, Father. Amen. I just want to speak the name of Jesus, my Lord, over every heart and every mind, Jesus. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Yes, I do. Hallelujah. I just want to speak the name of Jesus, hallelujah, till every dark addiction starts to break, hallelujah, declaring every hope and every freedom, I speak Jesus. Yeah, yeah, your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life, break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Oh, I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Oh, over fear and all anxieties. Hallelujah. To every soul held captive by depression, I speak Jesus. Your name is on our one. Your name is here. Your name is Yes, it is. My God, every stronghold shines through the shadows. But like a fire. Hallelujah. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the street, Jesus in the dark and so for every enemy. Oh, Jesus, for I speak the holy name, Jesus. Oh, shout Jesus from the mountains. Yes, Jesus in the streets. Oh, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Oh, Jesus for our families. We speak the holy name. Jesus. Oh, your name is your name is your name is the light. 
Somebody lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are the name. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, the name that breaks every chain. The name that heals. Hallelujah. 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 Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. She connected to the King of Glory, the Lord, strong and mighty. Lift up your faith this evening. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Lift it up, Jesus. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up to the King of Glory, the Lord, strong and mighty. So let your faith move tonight. Let it move, let it move, let it move. Let it move. Yeah. loves you with an everlasting love. Be still and know that he is God over yeah. every situation, over everything that you're going through. Ah, that's our God. So amazing. He's so amazing. He's so amazing. Bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. Bless you all. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord God. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Um, somebody commented that the anointing is so strong. And I actually, I can just, I feel God so much. Um, there's such a bubbling in my spirit. It, it's, it's sometimes in the simplistic way that we experience the move of God. And I just believe if you believe, it's all about our faith tonight and connecting. I don't know what your favorite scripture is, but you just begin to declare it over you because the word of God does not come back void. And the Lord, the Lord respects his word. I don't, I don't know if you're interceding for somebody. I don't know if you're interceding for somebody in your family, but we can begin to declare the word of God that he's a healer and he's a healer over every situation. And I strongly believe that tonight. And I've seen God move and he will surely, surely move. And so you just begin to send out those flyers in the different groups and say, come to the healing room tonight. Come to the healing room tonight. There's still people who need to be here tonight to experience, to experience God. Some have gone into a dry place and it's okay. Ezekiel yes, it talked about season, but there is a restoration and healing in here tonight. Praise God. And I'm gonna just go straight into the, the speaker for tonight. Um, um, Sister Kadeen Fairweather, um, she hails from West Croydon Church. Um, she, um, I'm just gonna allow her to introduce herself um, and the floor is yours, sis. Good evening, everybody. There's not much to introduce. My name is Sister Kadeen, <laughs> born and raised um, in West Croydon, christened in West Croydon. Had a brief bout um, in our Elephant and Castle district just for a little while. Um, and now I'm back home. 
Um, so there's my introduction, new tea baby, <laughs> um, through and through. Uh, Shankia asked me to speak today um, on the topic of healing and faith moves, our faith moving God and moving in faith. Um, and the scripture that came to me is the scripture that came to me in almost an unconscious state at one of the lowest points in my life. So we're just going to read this really short passage of scripture, touch on a few things in there, and I'm going to share my story. Um, I'm going to share the working testimony because we're still working through it. Um, and then we're going to pray. Um, so I'm reading from Mark 8, 22 to 26, our blind man in Bethsaida. Um, and they came to Bethsaida and some people brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him, him being Jesus. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he opened his eyes, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. And he sent him to his home saying, do not even enter the village. Um, and we'll, see, we'll say amen to the reading of God's word. So I've got loads and loads and loads of notes, but I'm just going to pick up on <laughs> um, what I believe God wants us to really focus on here. Um, so there are a couple of things. In verse 22, and they came to Beth Bethsaida and some people brought him to a blind man. He was uh, brought a blind man and begged him to touch him. Um, they brought Jesus to him. His community brought Jesus to him. Um, so what we're looking at is a community recognising that one in their midst needed the power of Jesus to touch them, to change them, to heal them, and recognise that they were not in a state or in a place to be able to bring themselves to him, okay? Uh, the second point, Jesus takes the blind man by his hand and leads him out of the village. Um, when we look back through scripture, back in Matthew 11, um, there's a, a portion, there's a, there's a verse where Jesus denounces cities and Bethsaida is one of those cities. And he says, woe to you Bethsaida, for if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. He's saying, you've seen me work, you've seen my miracles, you've seen my power, yet still you've not re repented and you've not turned. And the result of that was that Jesus no longer performed miracles in that region. And so when we see Jesus come and take the man and walk him out the city, he's saying, <laughs> even though in this space, because of the heart of these people, it's still my intention to take you to a place where I can work on you and where I can heal you. Um, and I think there's also something to say and talk about with regards to that walking and that journey. Um, I can imagine the conversations, like you had to walk out of the village, out of the city, out of the town that wasn't up the road to Tesco's to go and my kryptonite right now is um, the little squishies, you know, the, um, <laughs> the, the squishy sweeties. They have me in a chokehold, but pray, pray for me. I will be delivered. Um, but, you know, it's not up the road. It's not Tesco. This is a big, this is a long journey. And so in this journey, there would have been conversations. How long have you been blind? Jesus knows, but what is this? This is the beginning of relationship. Uh, how long have you been blind? Were you born blind? Did something happen to you? How do you manage? What's day to day like? What would you, what do you want? If you weren't blind, what would you want? All of these conversations, the relationship that is being built as Jesus takes him to a place, takes him to a state um, where he's actually able to work on him. And I think those are things that happen to us in the reality of life. Like sometimes you, God will take you up and walk with you. And the thing is, the blind man could never have doubted that Jesus was with him because in order for him to go to an unfamiliar space and place, he had to be guided by another. And the person whose hands he was placed in was the hands of Jesus. So there was no doubt that he was walking with Jesus, but his state was not changing. He was still blind. He still couldn't see. He, he still had a requirement to lean on others to guide him. Um, and sometimes, well, for me, let's not talk about sometimes, I use that word a lot. Um, there are points in our lives or in our journeys with God, even when we are seeking him for certain things. Right now we're talking about healing, but it can be anything where there is no doubt that he is with us, but our circumstance isn't changing. Like, I know you're here, 
There's no question mark about it. But my circumstance is not changing. Uh, and I think what I want to encourage us with today, if I don't encourage you with anything else, is that even that continuing to walk with Jesus, even though nothing is changing and you still cannot see, is still a faith move. It's still a faith move. And so they get to the outside of the city and Jesus spits on some dirt and makes his little mud bath and puts it on his eyes. Um, this isn't the first time that Jesus has healed in this way. He's also healed, I think it was, I don't know if it was a mute man. There's another man in scripture that he's healed in this same way. But the other man, he does it in front of everybody else. This man, he takes out of the city. One of the reasons I've already highlighted that he wasn't doing any more miracles in Bethsaida. But also God knows us. And let me tell you something, you're not spitting in Kadeen's eye. <laughs> You are not rubbing dirt and spitting, especially in front of people. I joke, I jest, but I believe that God knows us, knows our nature and will meet us and know what we can handle and what we can't. Do you understand? Like there are some things, there are some circumstances, there are some instances that there are people that get saved in living rooms. I'm one of them because they're not necessarily one that are gonna go to the altar or respond to the altar call, but Jesus will provide the circumstance to ensure that you have access to what he has for you. And he looked up and he said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Something's happening, I know that. Something is changing, but I haven't quite arrived. I still feel limitation. I still feel like the, the, the constraints aren't as tight, but they're still here. Um, so here's where I insert myself. I was diagnosed with systemic lupus erythematosus, lupus, um, when I was 20 years old in 2011. Absolutely fine, fit and healthy um, young woman. I was in between my first and second year of university. It was that summer. Um, and I just started having like problems with my joints. Um, I was working at Greg's at the time. I thought these 5 a.m.s are killing me. I'm getting old before my time. That's what I thought was happening. Um, but it was going on for like, it had started from like the latter end of the term going on into the summer. I went to the doctors and they gave me some painkillers specifically for joint pain. Um, and I took those painkillers that night and I woke in the middle of the night, literally like delirious, like walking into walls, couldn't, couldn't like orientate myself, having difficulty breathing really poorly. Um, my mum took me to the hospital. I was in hospital for five days. They ran blood tests and said that there's either a clot in my lung or in, in my respiratory system. So it was either in the, the lung or the heart. I had to be on IV blood thinners and all of those kinds of things. Um, and I'm trying to make a very long story short. I was in and out, in and out of hospital for about six weeks. So I'd be home for a few days, then I'd come up in a rash all over my body. I have to go back to the hospital. Um, I developed something called pericarditis and I had, so I had pleurus and pericarditis at the same time. I had fluid around my heart and I had fluid around my lungs. So I couldn't breathe. I couldn't lay down. Um, I couldn't catch my breath. I couldn't walk long distances. There came a point where I couldn't be left home by myself because I'd pass out on the stairs. So I'd come home or my dad would come home and I'm passed out on the stairs. So I had to be home with somebody. Um, at all times um, and then that bank holiday um, I'd gotten up my, my kind of routine was get up peppermint pain relief and we you know and carry on with the day and I took that pain relief and then I was just like literally just vomiting 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 pass out because I ain't got no energy get up vomiting vomiting pass out and at this point, I've been to and from the hospital for about four or five times. And so every time my mum was like, Kadiba, got to go to hospital. I got to a point where I was like, I don't want to go. They can't help me. They're not helping me. There's nothing they can do. I'd rather just stay in the comfort of my home. But I literally had to be carried to the car, to the hospital. We go to the hospital. Um, they're, you know, doing a vital to EEG, all of that kind of stuff. I'm laying down. I've got a resting heart rate of about 145. The nurse checks me and she gets another nurse who then gets a doctor, who gets a team of doctors, who moves me to a private room, who do an ultrasound on my heart. Um, and basically fluid had collected in my chest and was crushing the top two ventricles of my heart. Um, and they were like, you know, you need to have surgery. So I'm like, okay, cool. When we have a surgery tomorrow, they were like, no, my love now, like get dressed now, get changed now. 
had to have, I had um, two litres of fluid removed from my chest cavity. I was in hospital for about four days. Um, and that's when all the tests came back and finally gave me my diagnosis of lupus. I left the hospital um, on 12 pills a day. Um, I was able to return to uni that September um, and the disease was managed up, down, up, down as with the nature of autoimmune diseases but I was able to continue and manage. I finished my undergraduate degree. I went, I got my master's um, and, and I, I started to work, but up, down, up, down. Um, and anybody that does have like this kind of illness knows that it's not just a physical game, it's a mental game. It's a having to realize that the things that you want to do, you can't do. And like my mom used to run joke and say, even if it's by Kadeen's baby finger, she'll drag herself there. And I used to laugh like, yeah, I'm strong. And she used to be like, no, you're a fool. You're an idiot. <laughs> you're, 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 re you're pushing too much pressure on yourself. But, you know, I, I went into the working world and I was getting on. Um, and in 2018, my, you know, my medication changed. It reduced. I was no longer on 12 pills a day. I think we got down to about six. Um, and in 2018, I started to get pain in my left leg. Um, went to and from the hospital. Not, they said I had rainwaves, which is like, um, it's when you've got poor circulation. So the blood's not going to like your, your extremities, like your fingers and your toes and bits and pieces. Um, they said it's a common side effect of lupus. Um, if it gets more serious then they'll consider alternate treatment, fine. Um, going to and from the hospital, um, I couldn't walk, there came a point where I was having a lot of trouble walking. They said that they then did a blood test. My D-dimer was up, long story short. That, that means that there's a clot in your system. Um, so they said that I'd need to come back to find out if it's in my artery or not. Um, I asked if they would do that scan that day. They said, no, nope, we'll send you a letter in the post. Went home. At this point in time, again, I'm posted up downstairs. I can't, cause I can't put my foot to the floor. It has to remain elevated. We come to realize it's because there's a blockage in the artery later on. Um, and I had the hospital appointment the Thursday. This was the Tuesday night. And I remember sitting and seeing like the, the on the white of my foot, like red spots, like traveling from my toes, like up to the back of my foot. And I was like, mom, my stomach says we need to go to the hospital today. Like, I, we need to go now. And, you know, in traditional Caribbean fashion, go on, go beard. So I had to go and <laughs> hold a fresh, pack my bag. And we went to the hospital. Well, no, my mum called the ambulance. The ambulance came. They weren't really happy with how I was looking. Blue light me to my local hospital. Um, and this is another discussion for us to petition in another avenue. But um, the pain of black people is not, it's not considered. <laughs> when you go into our NHS, um, it's not counted as it should be. I asked for, pay I had gas and air going into the hospital. I asked for pain relief. They offered me paracetamol. I thought it's okay. I can buy that over the counter. That's all you can offer me. It's all right. They did the scan of my artery. We're coming up to about four o'clock in the morning and they find a clot in my artery that's cut off the supply from my knee to my foot. So the blood can't travel there. Once it gets like to like my knee, middle of the calf, because of the blockage, it's being pushed back up right and so they're like get her IV morphine and that's what I mean when I say our pain is discounted because when I asked for pain relief I was offered paracetamol when they saw the weight of the issue they gave me IV morphine I was um blue lighted over let's put the lamp on it's getting dark um blue lighted over to George's um they said they need to do surgery you know when they say it bad but it not so bad so they were like you know you've got a blockage in your artery uh, we're going to use a wire to get it out. If we can't get it out, we'll take a vein from your thigh, bypass the blockage to your foot. Bish, bash, bosh. Let's go. So, you know, my family's there. My dad is a guy that will laugh in all sorts. When he's nervous, he, he tells jokes. So my dad's the person that's in the hospital running joke at the most inappropriate times. And so that's what we were doing, laughing, running joke on the ward. They were doing all of the preoperative scans to get ready for surgery the next day. And then another group of doctors come to see me. Um, and they say, following the scans and the images that we've gotten, it seems that this blockage has been there for longer than we thought. Um, and it's, it's starting to, it's solidified 
and actually it doesn't look like your leg is viable, what what does that mean? Uh, we might we're going we're considering amputation. I'm 27 years old. Amputation. Um, because if we don't amputate, you'll either have chronic pain for the rest of your life or you'll get sepsis and die. The world's like literally underwater, like everything stopped for me at that point in time. My sister comes down, she was at Northampton Uni at the time, she comes straight down. I'm, I'm getting prepped for surgery the next day. So if I'm if I start to cry, I'm not like sad. Like I'm actually I'm 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 glad. I'm genuinely glad. Um, so don't be like, oh poor Kadeen, I'm genuinely glad. Um, and yeah, so my sister comes down and I and she described my parents described me as numb, my family described me as numb. And 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 if I reflect back, I wonder if you know all the plans and ideas that you have for what your life is gonna be like, and now I'm gonna be an amputee wheelchair user. Like <laughs> I may not be able to live independently for the rest of my life. Um, and my sister comes and she, um, she's like, Kadeen, if you prayed, I'm like, no, I can't. I'm just, I, I can't pray. I, we, we've all been there. We're like, I can't. Jesus, you know what's going on. Jesus, you know what I want. There's nothing I can tell you that you don't know. So what am I telling you? What am I asking you? I can't even, I, I don't even want to look at the, the depth of what's going on in my heart, more or less to take it out, open it up and ask you questions. I don't have it. Yeah. And it's, and I look at the scripture and I'm like, they brought Jesus to the blind man. Yeah. And my sister, she came and she went and got me a notepad because she knows I journal. She got me a notepad. And she just started playing music. She just she just put her phone next to me, put the headphones in, and she just started to play songs over me. Um, one of them was, um, it was William Murphy. We said our hope on you. We said our hope on your love. We said our hearts on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting she played songs over me. I will trust in the rock. I will trust in the rock. I will trust in the rock, Jesus. There comes a point where you have to go to like your default connection with God. My default connection with God is worship. If I can't talk, I can sing. If I can't pray, I can sing. If I can't read, I can sing. And my community, the people that brought Jesus to me were the ones that knew me well enough to know that. And so my family come around, half my family are believers, half of them are not, but my mum's coming, my mum is coming, amen. That's that's all um, Grandy, that's Sir Grandy's doing. He set eyes on her when he reached West Croydon and she's a regular attendee now. Um, but we all prayed and I went in for the surgery um, and I come out and I remember, sorry, I, I'm trying to be timely, Shanky. I see the time. I remember my, um, my mum and dad, they come and they hug me and they say, Kadeen, it's all right. It's not your fault. It's okay. It's all right. We'll get through this. It will be fine. So now in my mind, I'm like, wait, the leg's gone. Cause I remember before when I was signing consent, I said, what's the risk of you not, not amputating? And they said, we'll just have to put you in um under again we'll just have to put you under again to do another surgery at a later date so I was like go through the fine print like if all else fails wake me up <laughs> kind of thing so when they came in and did all of that I was like well is the leg gone is the leg gone they said no it's still there but it's all right it's all right and um this lady in my life called mummy coral um and she's like my spiritual mom and she came into the room I mean I see you at this point and the tears are falling and she said to me she said Kadeem what do you see and I said, I see men walking like trees. She said, okay, we'll pray. We'll pray again. And so the next day we wake up and uh, well, I'm out of ICU and the surgery is deemed as unsuccessful. They were unable to remove the clot from my leg. And so this is the Friday and they say, look, by Sunday we've got to amputate because like I said, it's either sepsis and death or chronic pain. 
And so every day they're wrapping up my foot. They're trying to get the foot warm. They're using like a little Doppler to try and pick up if there's like a pulse in the leg. Day two, there's a pulse in the leg. Okay. Day four, move your toes, but we still might have to amputate. Okay. Day seven, you're moving your ankle. Okay. Day eight, the surgeon that worked on me comes around and he says, you're a miracle. I said, pardon, Mr. Muhammad. I'm, I'm telling you his name for a reason. I said, pardon, Mr. Muhammad said, you're a miracle. He said, we were planning your second surgery. What do you mean? And then, then the next day they start coming in and talking about you know, rehab and physiotherapy. I said, okay. And so I was in the hospital for three, four weeks total. Um, and I remember when I, I looked back like a couple months later, I read over the journal that I had written my prayer in. And I, I said, God, let me walk out of this hospital. That's what I'm asking you for. We can figure out everything else. I just want to walk out of this hospital. And I remember on the day I was discharged, there was like a big old bangerang about whether there was a porter to come or if the porter could and couldn't come and all that kind of stuff. And I'm being vexed, like, I just want to go home. Where's this porter? I'll forget it. And, you know, I limped out with the crutches and I was like, no, God answered my prayer. I said, I want to walk out of the hospital. And he made sure there was no porter there <laughs> so that I could walk out of that hospital. And so Kadeen still has a leg. And Kadeen has done what they said that she couldn't. I've been on planes, I've been on flights. I've done all of those things. I can lift 65. I'm not squat, I'm not, I'm not boasting, but I can squat 65. I can squat 65. I, I, I'm doing all that they said I wouldn't. Jesus has been good to me. But this diagnosis, it still lingers over my head. I still have lupus. I still have to take, I'm down to four go though, guys. We're on the down. I'm down to four pills per day. There's still, there have still been some developments. Like I now have to have my blood monitored every week because I'm now, I'm now at heightened risk of clotting. You know, I just turned 32 the other day. And, you know, so to have to, 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 to have to be in the hospital all the time for those kinds of things. And you, you're not, I'm not around my age mates. I'll tell you that. Um, but there have been, you know, new developments over the past couple of years speaking to my future that shake my heart. They shake my heart. Um, and that area of my life seems to be sitting in silence. Like I'm waiting for God to move. I'm waiting for God to move. And, and I feel like I'm still, I feel like he's taking my hand and walking with me. I know he's there. I see men walking like trees. That's where I'm at. I'm at I see men walking like trees. I don't see clearly yet. Um, and, you know, we discussed why miracles don't take place in Bethsaida. But sometimes let's think about why do miracles not happen to us at certain points in our lives? Let's check why. Sometimes it's not even us. Sometimes it's the environment. Sometimes it's we're not at a space to really recognize what it is that God's doing. Sometimes maybe we will squander the miracle. Um, but I would encourage all of us to continue to walk. Just go on the walk with Jesus. Just, just go on the walk with him and trust that even when you know he's there, but things are not changing, um, that his intention for us is to be with him in wholeness. Like our sister Nadine said, whether that be here on earth or when we see him ultimately, his desire for us is to be with him in wholeness. Um, there's, there's a song um by Travis Green sorry I'm sure I'm not yeah it's by Travis Green um called While I'm Waiting I believe it's called While I'm Waiting and the vamp says while I'm waiting I'm getting stronger my faith is rising and I will run on while I'm waiting I'm lifted up on wings as eagles. I believe I will trust in you. While we wait, while we wait, we get stronger, faith rises. Um, faith rises, faith rises, faith rises. Um, and in the middle, that is enough. 
faith rising in the middle is enough. And knowing that God is the one that's holding our hand when we can't see and we're in unfamiliar land and territory is enough. Um, so that's 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 all I wanted to share with you today. I wanted to, sh- and, and so I st- I'm still waiting. <laughs> I'm still waiting for complete healing. Um, and I trust that if he can allow me to see men walk like trees, that he'll allow me to go home. And he said to him, go home, don't go through the village, i.e. go and do now what you've been healed for. Don't get caught up on a soapbox. I'm God enough all by myself. I don't need an advert. I'm going to do it later. I don't need an advert. Go back and do what it is that you've been healed for. Hallelujah. Um, Hallelujah. God is kind. He's merciful. He's consistent. He is faithful. He's a covenant keeper. That's what I love. He's a covenant keeper. And I say it all the time, people must be tired. But even when I break it, he holds fast. And that is beautiful to me. Um, So I'm going to pray. Um, And I'm going to give back to Shankia. Father, you are good. I love you. I glorify you. I lift you up. I place you at the highest place for you are the great high priest. You are high above all else, oh God. There is nothing that can stand beside you, Jesus. You are able to do all things but fail. It's your desire to see us whole. It is your desire to walk with us, to build relationship with us. I thank you that you are a God that goes into a place that you said you would never move but bring me out to a space that you may move in my life, oh God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you help us to have the faith and the understanding and the patience, the diligence, the resilience to stick with you, oh God, when it feels like things are not moving, when it feels like circumstances are still dark, oh God, when it seems as if it is not your intention to answer or bring us out, Jesus. I pray, Father, that we can be and do what you have mirrored to us what you have shown us to be which is steadfast oh god give us the ability to be steadfast and increase our faith even now oh god right now i am standing in the middle but you have given me a big miracle to stand and boast on oh god and so at times lord jesus like sister nadine i don't really like sharing the story because sometimes it feels like woe is me i don't want them to look at me as what i was or what i'm going through lord jesus but i pray that you remove that shame I pray that you remove that condemnation and let us boast in the goodness of our God, Lord Jesus. Let us be examples of your power. Let us be examples of your kindness. Let us be examples of your glory. Let us be examples of your mercy here this day, oh God. And for those that feel alone, for those that are not sure if you are walking with them, for those that feel that they have disqualified themselves or they have placed themselves in environments in which you will not move for them, oh God, I pray that you delve into their circumstance, Jesus. And sometimes we say, drag them out. (laughs) Drag them and snatch them. But God, I pray that you offer your hand and that they may walk willingly with you out of the city, out of the village, to a place of solitude, oh God, where they can lay themselves bare, Lord Jesus, remove all limitations and barriers and allow you to do with them what you see fit and to heal them how you see fit, oh God, that they may go back and do what it is that you have called them to do. We want to behold that we may bring you glory. We, we don't want to be whole to run off and live a life that doesn't glorify you, oh God, but we want to be whole that we may return to our respective places and be the lamps on a hill that shall not be hidden. We thank you. We glorify you. We lift you up. We trust you and we believe you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We give God praise for you, Sister Kadeen. Um, do not go away because um, I just want to say to everyone online, and we may not finish at nine o'clock and it's okay and you can agree, that this testimony is powerful and we had to give it room. I'm going to ask um, Brother Phil if he could pray for Kadeem. We could not let her go or just give her testimony without sealing her under prayer. Um, and I know that her testimony touched Brother Phil because I was watching it. <laughs> and I would like you to pray for her. And if we all could unmute, but Phil, could you just lead out in prayer, please? Thank you. 
Yeah, Kadeem, thank you so much for sharing. I believe that testimony is going to go places and uh, reach hearts and lives uh, for Jesus and raise faith. Amen. Uh, so, Father God, I thank you for your daughter. Amen. Lord, I thank you, God, that you know all things. Lord, and we can be confident in you that all things work together for the good of us that love you and are called according to your purpose. Lord, I thank you that you have called Kadeem. Mm -hmm. Lord, I thank you, God, that you have uh, that you have written your name on her, on her heart and you've printed it upon her spirit. She's yours. Mm -hmm. She's your property, oh God. Lord, and I thank you that no power of hell mm -hmm. nor any scheme of man can pluck her out of your hand, Lord God. I thank you, God, that even in this situation, even in this liminal stage, even in mm -hmm. this stage of seeing men like trees, oh God, Lord, that you are using her life as a testimony. Lord God, I thank you, God, Lord, that as she as she speaks, as she shares, as she walks around, as she just uh, moves and just just to be the person, continues to be the person that you've called her to be. Lord, that that would be such a witness, such a powerful testimony, oh God, Lord, to those who don't know you, Lord God. Lord, I thank you, God, that, uh, Lord, she said that, uh, you know, it's not about having a soapbox, but I thank you, God, that promotion comes from you. Lord, I thank you, God, that you uplift, oh God, Lord, the humble. Lord God, and I pray, God, hallelujah, that as you present platforms and stages, oh God, Lord, for her to speak, that she realizes that it's not about her, but ultimately it's about you, Lord, and it's what you want to do, Lord God, in the lives of the people that hear this testimony, oh God, Lord. Lord, I pray, God, that you continue to furnish her and sharpen her in the word of God. I thank you, Lord God, for that gift, oh God, Lord, the, the foolishness of preaching. I thank you, Lord God, that that office, Lord God, rests upon her. Amen. Lord God, I pray, God, that she would walk in that calling, oh God. Amen. Lord, you have healed her to walk. Lord Amen. God, so cause her to walk, oh God, Lord, into situations and circumstances where the enemy feels like he's got a, he's got a hold over it, oh God, Lord. But as she walks, Lord, like the three um, lepers, oh God, Lord, that the enemy would hear the sound of an army, oh God, Lord, and be confused, oh God, Lord. Lord, and every spirit, oh God, Lord, that is occupying that place would flee, Lord God, leaving it open for your word Hallelujah. to go forth and penetrate hearts and minds and for lives to be changed in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, that she doesn't even understand. She can't even comprehend the things that you have prepared for her, Lord God, but I thank you. And I pray, God, that I cover her right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I cover her under your blood, oh God, Lord, I ask for your protection, Lord God, over her, and we thank you, we stand with her, oh God, knowing that you are a healer, Lord God, and no matter how long it takes, oh God, Lord, whether it's on this side of eternity or the next, we continue to stand, Lord God, and know that you are the Lord that heals. Amen. So Lord, we thank you for your daughter. We thank you for what you will do in, with, and through her life. And we thank you, O oh God, Lord, for the lives that will come to know you through her testimony. Amen. Lord, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, um, Minister Phil. Thank you so much for praying. Um, we're good. We've got um, another prior point, but we're just going to go into a time of giving. Um, it is good ground. It is good ground. And we're going to put up these slides for giving and um we could use this time to reflect as well um about the different prior points and also we've got a um prior wall is on padlet i think it's in the chat and one of my colleagues will post the link again where you can put your prior request and we'll try our best to cover it tonight um and if it's a burning prior request you can put it in the chat and um send us a, a private message and bring it us to our attention. But my heart is overwhelmed. God is doing something. Um, he's doing something. We, he's doing something. Kadeem, we are praying for you. We're praying for you, um, Sister Nadine. We are praying for you both um, because God is a miracle worker. Amen. So um, can we have the giving slides, please? Thank you.
Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you for everyone that I've given. Um, we richly appreciate it. It is good ground. Amen. Um, without further ado, we, we're going to go into the other prayer points and after we're going to do a corporate prayer, I just want to invite Minister Orville to come and he's going to lead his prayer point. But before he does, I want you, because this is for the men's actually, to send this flyer or a message to all the men you know that are not busy and say, come on this prayer. It is so important. Is so important. It could be a young person who may not be at a youth group or is watching TV. Invite them to come. It's vital. It's important. I'm going to task everyone on here tonight. God bless you. Minister Orville, the floor is yours. Ah, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Minister Shankia, Engine Room uh, 2.0 team. Um, I want to acknowledge... Obviously, our, our um, administrative bishop, uh, Bishop Granderson, and Sister Sonia. Um, thank you for having me on your platform. Uh, I just, I count it a great honor uh, to be among you tonight. Now, <laughs> I sat down and I've listened to Nadine and Kadeen. <laughs> wow. Um, I tell you what, all I was doing was sitting there just making some notes because you guys were blowing my mind and you were throwing some stuff at me that was like oh wow I didn't see it like this and I didn't see it like that so I just want to thank you for your testimonies because if it hasn't helped anybody tonight believe me it's helped me um I'm here <laughs> I'm here on assignment I'm here on assignment now I know I'm speaking about prostate cancer but I have a double fold assignment because I'm not going to just deal with men and this prostate, prostate cancer thing because you see here's the situation a lot of men won't do it a lot of men don't understand it and the men that are dealing with it that ain't speaking that's a whole nother ball game but what we forget on the flip side of that and i'm i'm a testimony of all of that is the women that have to deal with this so we we, we forget although the men are going through the women that are probably wives girlfriends whoever mothers sisters to these men that are dealing with prostate cancer also have to deal with what the man is dealing with and so let me give you a little backstory as quickly as i can because i know time has gone so in august of 2021 i was at a wedding um doing some photography and my back gave out towards the end of the day I found I couldn't walk. Uh, I found I was in excruciating pain. Fortunately for me, um, Marcia, I know, I know you, a lot of you all know Marcia already, um, powerhouse in the gospel, doing what she does, but she also loves photography. And I've taught her well, I believe. Uh, <laughs> and um, so she took over for me at the end. She had to drive me home. Now for two months, I sat at home and couldn't move. Didn't know what was going on. Thought it was sciatica. The pain was just excruciating. Kept on calling the GP, but we're in the height of COVID, so can't get a doctor's appointment, can't go and see the doctor and all that. Near enough, two months later, come the beginning of October, um, I managed to get to the GP and ask me all sorts of questions about me, my lifestyle, you know, the norm. Are you overweight? Yes, I am. You know, the norm. It's what we all go through. However, as I was about to walk out the door, um, she says to me, have you ever had a prostate test? And I went, no. Um, I'm in my 50s. Um, so uh, <laughs> just had just had another birthday. So I'm, I'm now close to, to strictly. So praise the Lord. Um, <laughs> but um, I said, no, I've never, I've never, never had it. I understood some, some stuff about it. But for me, it was like, okay. So she said, let's, let's do that as well. So I said, what does that entail? She said, a blood test. No problem. We'll add it to the, 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 the five or so blood tests I'm having anyway. Uh, about a week later, after having those blood tests, I get a phone call to say, um, well, we've seen something in your blood. We're not sure what it is. Um, we need for you to go and have an examination. Um, 
so I then had to go to the hospital have a unfortunate rectal examination not the most pleasing thing for men so I understand why men run from this thing but um, I'm, I'm coming for you but I'm, I want to move this thing on as quickly as possible um, from that still wasn't sure then they turned around and said okay you need to have an MRI um, I had an MRI this is all in the everything that's happened is in a matter of say a three-week period I then have an MRI um, the MRI is inconclusive yet again so it's a strange thing so the next thing I'm told Mr Thomas you need to have a biopsy having a biopsy was kind of the turning point in where I got to here mentally because unless it's explained to you you actually don't know what you're dealing with in a biopsy um, I said this to my wife and I've said it to many women that I've shared my experience with I have an untold respect for you ladies that have to have these smear tests every year I get it and then some and um, I, ha I had the biopsy and it was one of the most excruciating things I've ever had to deal with. I was turned, I was, I, I, my legs were pushed apart. I was turned upside down. I had best part of 10 or so injections around my groin area and stuff like that. Um, and then I had these metal rods that were pushed up my rectum. So I'm being graphic because you know what? I need you to understand what this thing does. Um, but the thing is, there was no understanding of what I was going through or what I would be going through. They, they, it wasn't told to me. It was told to me actually as it was happening. I left that hospital a different person to the person that I came on, I curled up in a ball, I cried like a baby. And my wife couldn't get nothing out of me for about two days because I wouldn't speak because I felt like I was violated because that's how it made me feel. Okay. Um, after I've had that biopsy on the 15th of November, I remember it clearly sitting in the middle of my living room. I receive a phone call at quarter to five that says, Mr. Thomas, I am calling from the urology department and um, this is just to let you know you have prostate cancer. The question I asked then was, what does that mean? Mr. Thomas, I don't really know. Who are you then, if you don't know? So I have a phone call from an administrative person who had no right to actually give me the news. So here I sit in the middle of my living room and you know, like anybody else, forget the word prostate, the only word you hear is cancer. And that's what you're sitting on. And that's what you're having to deal with. And nobody can answer your question. And you're calling and nobody, you can't get through to any department because I'm already told someone will be in contact with me. It never happened. I sat with this for three weeks before I actually saw the consultants. I had to go and tell my parents. Now, my parents are now in their 80s. Um, so it wasn't the easiest thing to go and tell them, especially when you can't give an answer to what you're going through and what it means. And what makes it worse is 10 years ago, I, I in April, I lost my, my brother to pancreatic cancer. So here's my mother thinking she's going to lose yet another son. So you can imagine the strain it has. So the strain it has on my mother, the strain it has on me, the strain it has on Marcia. And I sit for three weeks, not understanding a thing. So this thing starts to do overtime and it starts to think the worst and it's got nowhere to go with the information but to sit and just like how you see me rocking right now that was me for the best part of three weeks why had no one to talk to didn't understand this thing wouldn't talk to anyone didn't understand it didn't know where to turn um cut a long story short eventually i i do i do see the consultants they explain to me everything um, but by then, my, my world is already spiralling. I then have to push to get my operation. So I'm told, I've, made, I've been made so many promises and I was told my operation would take place the same year. 
my operation took another four months before I had the operation. And the only reason why I had the operation is because I pushed. Because I actually work for the NHS. So I understand the systems. But I see, I didn't want to turn around and let them know that I work for the NHS. I wanted to see how you treat your patients full stop within the NHS system. And believe me, it was an eye opener. And it's, and it's worse because it's the trust that I actually work for that were actually dealing with me. So again, a lot of things that I had to push, kick, scream. Eventually I had to take up my ID and say, listen, enough is enough. I know because I understand the system, I know, I know now as a cancer patient, you should dealt with me within two weeks. But none of that was happening. And I had to push against the grain to eventually have my operation in March of 2022. Um, I had this thing they called the brachytherapy. So some, some people are not, are not in a position to have what I had because it depends on the extent of your cancer. Um, I, I was blessed enough and fortunate enough to have this. And this is where they inserted 10 lead pellets within my prostate. And that, those lead pellets are slowly shrinking my cancer. I am still, I'm on a three year journey. So as <laughs> Kadeen alluded to, and I loved when she said this, she said, she said, uh, <laughs> she said, while, while we wait, faith rises. But she said also that it's a pro she's still in the process of. So it's my, it's my faith process. So my, 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 my faith is saying, I'm going to get through this. My mind's saying something completely different. There's a fight going on in my mind. I shut down. People, I shut down. I don't speak. I don't leave my house. I never left my house for the best part of four or five months. If my wife said to me, let's go for a walk, I'd look out the window. Yes, yeah, lovely. Wouldn't move. Wouldn't talk. Shut down. It was a struggle. She's trying to, she's trying to do what she's trying to do because now I begin to shut down even when it comes to ministry. I just don't know where to turn. I then find a couple of guys who've reached out to me who, who have gone through the same thing. Again, it's great when you speak to someone who's gone through it, but not everybody's journey is the same. So when you listen, when you listen to somebody who's gone through it, if you take on what they've been through, it may mess you up again. So what you have to recognize is it's like the word. You take the word, but you take what belongs to you. Not everything in the word might belong to you. And there's some things you have to bank. You bank it because it will come in handy later. But, but don't get to that stage where you take on everything and then think, this is my lot and this is my portion, when that's not what God says for you. So this is me. I joined a prostate, prostate cancer group online. That became overwhelming because it then becomes information overload. So again, you, you, you get into that cycle and stuff like that. But I'm here to, so I'm still on my journey since November of 2021. I'm still on my journey. My, my PSA levels are going down. So I am on my faith walk. I am in the middle of my faith walk. They tell me it's three years, but that's man's three years. God's three years we know is a lot shorter. All right, so I, I'm standing on that. But who you, who you see now and who speaks to you and who you've come across, you know, Kadeen, you've, you've seen me at your church and you, you can see, you know the personality I have. That wasn't me, believe me. I would be the person that would be non-existent. But you see, especially my birthday just went, I woke up one morning and I said, you know what? You know what, me and, me and the devil ain't friends anymore because I've allowed him to ride me. I mean, I've been doing ministry. You know when you know how to do ministry? Here's, here, oh, sorry, let me just, let me just hit this. We all know how to do ministry. And we all know how the program works. And we all know what to say and how to sing when we're going through and we wear the mask and we wear it well. But sometimes we still don't allow anyone in to know what we're going through. And as Kadeen said, my, 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 de my default connection with God, like yourself, is music. It was the only thing that kept me, because you know what? The word weren't doing it because I couldn't read it. Prayer wasn't doing it because I couldn't, I couldn't do it. But I found my default in listening to music. But, you know, we all do stuff. I mean, uh, Minister Phil, now I know, 
there are times when you're standing in front and you're doing national convention, but sometimes you're not in that place. But you know what? You know how to do it. You know how to do it. So you know what? We push aside who we are for the sake of the call. But sometimes we, 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 need, we need people to understand that, you know, this, this answer of, you know what? How are you? Blessed and highly favoured. Please get a life. We're all blessed and highly favoured. All right. Let me just put it like that. We are all blessed and highly favoured. But that's not the truth of the matter. So Ecclesiastics 3 talks about times and seasons. And there's a time to be silent and there's a time to speak. That's, that's the two that I, 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 I pulled out today as, as I was thinking about this. The only problem is, is that if we say silent too long, we get consumed because we're not talking. Right. We, 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 we don't trust anybody. And I'm talking to my men right now. Right. I'm going, I'm going to identify my men. I know women, you, you, you got your stuff, but there's something about the way you guys do stuff. You know, you, you, you us men, we will analyze and process and the whole nine yards. You women just keep going. You keep flying. Praise God for you. I praise God for that's what you do. But us men are a lot more methodical sometimes. And we like to think things through and work it out and try and work it out and get to this place. And then we talk about who do we trust? Who can I trust? Who can I divulge this information? Who can I tell how I'm feeling? Because you see, again, Orville Thomas is going to be transparent because this thing can mess you up sexually too. So I'm going to be honest and keep it real. And that's why I said I speak to some of the women who are going to hear this as well. Because some women have their husbands who are going through this who won't talk to them. Yeah, they just won't talk to them. And then, the, and then the man starts to feel like the woman is getting on his nerves and trying to, try, trying to get at him. When that's not the case, she just wants to get in. She just wants to understand where you're at. I'm, I'm a living testimony of that, where I shut my wife out my life. And she kept on doing ministry and kept on doing me and kept on praying for me, getting up at five o'clock every morning and praying. That's the wife I have. And I know many of you on, on here are like that. Many of you that will watch this are like that. But men, I'm asking you, please don't shut your wives out. You see, the Bible says the wife is a helpmeet. And that's in the good and the bad. We, we, we said it in our vows, for better, for worse, in sickness and in health. So why do we shut them down in sickness? Why do we shut them down when we ain't got no money? Why do we have to feel less than? This is a partnership. We, this two that becomes one. Don't shut your wife out. Your wife needs to hear what's going on. If there's no one else you trust, trust your wife. And I know it's a hard thing to talk about if, if it messes you up sexually. Because then you start to feel less of a man. And that's a hard thing. But then there's women that have gone through hysterectomy and stuff like that, lost their wombs and the whole nine yards, and they feel less of a woman. But they've still had to keep going. So what says us? Yeah, I know we've been brought up as men to, to, to understand that, that that part of us is our manhood. Not always. Because you know what? I like what's up here. Because wisdom prevails over everything at the end of the day. You know what? That, that, that manhood, that's a, that's a moment. All right? I'm keeping it real. That's a moment. And it's a great moment. But it's not life. It doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't sum up what my life is. It doesn't sum up who I am. It doesn't sum up who I've become. It doesn't sum up where I am and now. It doesn't sum up where I'm going. And who I am and who I'm going to be. But I still need to talk. I still need to let you in and let you know, this is me, this is where it's at, and this is how I feel. So my assignment tonight is for the men that remain silent. Men, let me tell you something. This thing, this prostate cancer thing, please don't think, because it's the misconception. Oh my gosh, I have to go through a rectal examination. That's not the first port of call, okay? For those of you who want to know, you have a blood test. Any man that is 40 plus needs to do this. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. You see, we, 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 
But Lord, you're having me to be so transparent tonight, so I'm going to do it. We have this thing where we don't like to talk about if we're ill. We'll only go to the doctors if it's the last port of call. The problem with that is, I know they say ignorance is bliss, but ignorance will also wreck you. Because at the end of the day, by the time you get to the doctor or, or you get to the hospital, it may be too late to reverse your situation. So you know what? Take it from me, right? Take it from me. Just have a check, it's a blood test. If it comes back negative, then you're good for another year. And you check yourself regularly. It's, it's, it's just part of your, your setup, your MOT. This, 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 and this thing is hitting a lot of black men more than anything else, right? There's so much going on with, with men in general. And, we, and I'm not even gonna to touch the suicide rate and what's going on with men. And that again comes with silence. A lot of that is coming with silence. Why? Because we refuse to talk. We, we, we you know what? <laughs> we actually even refuse to talk to God. Let's, let's, let me keep it real. We're not even just refusing to talk to anyone else. We're actually refusing to talk to God. Because you know what our answer is? And Kadeem, you hit this so well. Oh, but God already knows. Yeah, I know he knows. However, he still wants communication from you. Because although he may know what you're going through, if you're not saying, Lord, I need help, then how does he, I know he knows you know him, but just like when you were a child and you wanted your mother or father's attention and you raised your hand up, mommy, daddy, whoever it may be, your guardian, that's how you want it. That's what, that's the attention you want. That's the same thing that we need to do and say, God, I need you. I can't do this by myself. You know what I mean? I, 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 I've messed up. I've allowed this thing to consume me. And the thoughts that you can have, I am telling you, this is not the greatest thing. It is not the greatest thing when you sit down there and you go through, you know what? You paint your own story and you paint your own end if you're not careful. I mean, I praise God, I didn't even get to that point. And I, and I know that's because God got me at the right time. Right. But what I'm saying to you, please, 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 I'm begging you. Yes, there is a time to be silent because you need to to deal with it. Right. But the mind, oh, Kadeem, you've hit it. The mind is a wild place. That's why the Bible says talks about casting down every imagination, because I'm telling you, if that thing consumes you sometimes and as we know with the statistics, there's no way back for some people because they don't know how to get back. My brothers, my sisters, men speak. Women keep praying until he speaks. Yeah, um, that's all we can do. That's all we can do. Please, if, if you're not sure about this thing, reach out, reach out. There's, um, oh, please, what's the, what's the bishop from Chrisma? Please so Bishop, much help me. Bishop Perkins. Everybody. Thank you. Guys, Bishop Perkins is a man to speak to. He knows about this stuff. You know, he did, he did a thing about the hundred men and getting men to be checked. He understands this thing. It's there. There's, and I know there's so many people in New Testament Church of God as men that are dealing with this thing that probably are struggling. Please, I urge you, it's imperative to talk. Find someone to confide in. Find someone to pray with. Find someone who's just going to help you to come out of that dark place. It's so important. It's a time to be silent, but now it's a time to speak. Father God, I thank you for this time that you have allowed me to speak into the lives of your people. Father, I know this is not an easy topic and I know that even though I have said what I've said and I've been transparent, there are still men that will still be silent. There are still men that say, not me. There are still men that say, I don't trust. But God, I pray right now that we break that cycle. We break that cycle in the name of Jesus. No weapon that is formed against them shall prosper and everything that rises up 
We condemn it right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for my sisters who are going through the time with some of these men because the men won't speak and they feel that they're on the outside. I pray, oh God, that you will give them strength to deal with this, that as they pray and they pray earnestly, God, I pray that they will too find solace in this, that their husbands will break through free of the mold of silence and there will be communication, communication that will help. Father, I pray, God, that you will open doors and you will open situations for these people where they can find a common place that they can speak and speak freely and be helped. Father God, I pray right now that the barriers that have been put up will be pulled down. Father, I pray that our men will find their voice again. I pray our men will find their voice again. Not just the voice just to praise, but the voice to speak. The voice to say, yes, it's me. Yes, I need this. Father, we know that we've been brought up in a, in a way that men don't cry and men don't show their feelings and everything else. But tonight I come against that because tears are a language that you understand, Lord Jesus. Father, so if there are to be tears, let the tears flow. Let the real men stand up and say, yes, I wanted to be, I want to be counted. Let the women stand with them, not see a soft man, but see a man who, 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 who has connected in a way with their own feelings. Mm, Jesus, I stand with every leader in every house in the New Testament church of God. I pray, oh God, that a community will be built out of this. A community and a safe place where men and women can speak, even if it's together or separate, especially if it's your married couples. Because there is a silence in marriage. <laughs> Lord, I don't even want to touch that tonight because right now it's the silence of the men and the situation of prostate cancer. We speak healing of the mind. Healing of the mind. <laughs> healing. Healing of the mind. We come right now and we take control of your minds, of the minds, of the minds. We infiltrate the minds. They will no longer be consumed. But there will be a release in the heavenlies and on earth that men will begin to speak again, that men will begin to trust again, that you will raise up men that will be willing to help another brother. That there will be trust in the kingdom. God, I thank you for what you're going to do. We know the process has begun. And we know healing has already taken place. And Father, we wait on the testimonies that will come forth. We thank you for the release. We thank you for what you have begun in these men. And for the lives of these women who are dealing with these men. God, I pray strength and peace. Let there be peace in the marriage. Ah, he tele mando soto. Ah, hanana maso to de basa na na na. Let there be peace in the marriage. Let this thing not destroy. Let this thing not destroy. But we speak peace. We speak love and we speak peace. God, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to um, turn over to Reverend Linford, who's going to lead us into prayer. But thank you, Minister Ovi, for um, sharing and being transparent because we need real in this season. And um, I know there are many people who have been touched. And just to say that it is going to be uploaded to YouTube so you can share with your spouse, you can share with your brother, you can share with your cousin, you can share with the men's group, you know, we can share. Um, um, there are 
support groups out there. They are um, signposting that can be given. And um, we are standing with each person that is going through that particular um, cancer, because we know that um, it's very rampant, especially in the Afro-Caribbean community. And it's as if we become desensitized, some of us, and we're not accepting this because we believe in the healer. Amen. Um, and so Reverend Linford. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. I think, um, you know, so powerful what, what you said, Minister Orville, when, when the men are silent, the community suffers. And uh, I think it's so powerful that we're speaking, we're opening our mouths, um, we're declaring God's truth, and we're sharing where we are on the journey. And I believe that we've hit the mark in Amen. prayer today, that we've struck the mark, we've hit the bullseye. And, and we're going to say release uh, of, of things that have been, you know, held up in people's lives. They're going to have a release um, um, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, because of we've hit the mark. Amen. We've hit the mark today in prayer. And we're going to join together uh, in praying. And I've seen some requests in the chat and we go to our Padlet. The link has been shared um, and I'm sure it'll be shared in the description on YouTube as well. But we've, we've had requests for uh, the mentors to, to raise up for our young men. That's a request that's been mentioned. So keep that in mind and keep that in heart. Um, we've had a request come in for um, prayer for uh, an individual's brother, Judean and Jamal, who is studying his GCSEs and also for, for a, a person's aunt who's just been diagnosed with stage four um, cancer. And she's in a care home and, and after having a, a brain tumor. We also want to pray for um, this individual's um, family as it was their, their, their grandfather's funeral recently. So we want to pray for this particular family. We've heard the, the request. We've also got on Padlet um, a request um, regarding baptism of the Holy Spirit for a teenage student. Amen. Someone met a, a Polish student um, today, this evening, and um, in engaging with them, it was revealed that the person's a, a Christian, attending a Christian Polish church, and they want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. To create a boldness to witness to their peers. And we're going to stand in agreement with her that, that the presence of God, the Spirit of God will baptize them in the Holy Spirit. And they will, it's Pentecost weekend, um, so we want to pray into this. Also, we've heard the, the stories and the, and the testimonies shared today. Let's, let's remember the people we know yeah. that might be going through these situations and let's pray into it. So let's join our voices together and enter into a time of corporate prayer for these requests and those that we know of that haven't been mentioned. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, Father God, that you've enabled us to hit the mark in prayer today. Oh, Lord God, it's all the great time. We have been praying Father God, we've been focused in our prayer, Father God. We've been specific in our prayer, Father God. We've been praying into the areas, Father God, that you have led us to pray into. Because you want to see men free. You want to see men whole. You want to see men free. Father God, you want to see women whole, Father God. And I pray, Father God, for the mentors, Father God, to pray. To share their stories, what the Lord has done for me, and if He can do it for me, He can do it for me. I am currently journeying with Him. I can journey with Him. The Lord help us to have a heart to mentor. Help us to have a heart to guide. Help us to have a heart to share. Help us to have a heart to breathe. Help us to go after the one that we pray that she will get satisfied. See someone struggle and know they're struggling, but just because. Je ne 
Thank you, God. And you know what? We want to thank you so much for joining us in prayer tonight. Tonight, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for 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 sharing. You know, there's this scripture in Galatians, and it talks about bearing one another's um, burdens, and it and it talks about you know, and that bearing, the understanding of bearing is is one one mean in, is to like be a stake. So to be a stake in a in a in a plant pot that will allow the plant to grow to grow straight and and in our prayer and in our encouragement we're doing that we're we're saying I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you in faith, I'm with you, I'm with you, you know, in 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 belief. But then we also say that that understanding of bearing is to lift off, and I believe that not only are we we standing together but we're lifting off, we we're, we're lifting shame. And the saying's been said, but I'm going to say it because it's true. Shame off you. <laughs> you know, um, uh, we, we're lifting, you know, some of us are grieving before death. And we're lifting that off. Some of us fear. Fear has, has almost encased us. And we're lifting that off tonight. And we're, and we're saying we, we, we're trusting God. We're standing together because God's placed us in family. 
and this is family. We are part of the kingdom family. Many churches, you know, come together on this platform to say that we are trusting in God. So we want to thank you for joining us. I want to thank you to say thank you to everyone that has contributed tonight. Everyone that has led a, a, a prayer. So we've got our psalmist, uh, Minister Yvonne, um, Sister Nadine, Sister Kadeen, um, Brother Orville, Minister Orville. Thank you so much for, for, your, for your, your, your passion. Thank you so much for your transparency. And uh, thank you for, for being available to God because it's brought change and transformation and we will hear testimonies Amen. of what God has done in the lives of people through the prayer tonight. Amen. So God bless you. Thank you to Minister Shankir for your, your hard work to organize this and Bishop Grandison, Sister Grandison, thank you for, for affording us this opportunity to gather together. Just to let you know, we've got more opportunities to gather together to pray. Amen. And, and we will be gathering on the 7th of um, June for engine room, which the engine room during the day, which is on this platform, but it's at 10.30 to 12.30 on this very platform. So please, if you are available and you can make the time, it's worthwhile. It's an investment to join together and pray. So join for that prayer engine room. And we've got engine room 2.0, which is an extension of that daytime prayer on the 30th of June, and that's in the evening, for those of you that can make the evening um, at 7.30 till nine o'clock. So listen, God bless you. Time is well spent tonight because we've been in the presence of God. And please do, as has been said, reach out, you know, connect with, with our, um, you can get us at NTCG online, um, but also share requests in Padlet, and reach out to a man. Uh, um, if you're a man, reach out to a man. I'm sure, um, Brother Orville, um, there's ways that we can contact you. And if you want to know how to, please get in contact with us and we will direct you to Minister Orville or any of our speakers or contributors. So God bless you. Have a great rest of the night and you take care. Bless you. God bless you.